Hey scholars, good to be back with you and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some material properties and descriptions of them. And the words you'll see a lot of times when you're in uh, strength of materials or whatever comes after that, if you're looking at composite materials or more advanced structural mechanics courses, you'll see these words, isotropic and orthotropic. There's actually another one called anisotropic, but let's stick with these. This, this includes most of the materials you'll see, but not all. Okay, we'll start here. And you'll also see one other, it's called homogeneous. So let's, maybe let's start there. The idea here is that before you can write an equation to describe the behavior of some object, like a beam or a plate or a cylinder or something like that, you have to know something about the materials. Well, in strength of materials, we typically assume it's made out of metal, because metal is easy to work with, and we assume metal is homogeneous and isotropic. Now, homogeneous, I know this is spelled homogeneous. If you're not talking about engineering, it's homogeneous. If you are talking about engineering, every class I've ever been in, every engineer I've ever talked to, that's homogeneous. So for all you English majors out there, sorry, I didn't invent this. This is just how it is. So homogeneous is, is, a, is a material that's the same everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to grab a material here at random. Um, let's see, how about I have a cheese stick, okay? This is going to be my lunch here in a few minutes. There's a cheese stick. It's the same everywhere. If I open this up and eat it, it's cheese all the way through. There's nothing else in here. Something that's not, hom uh, not homogeneous might be a chocolate chip cookie. Okay, you look at a chocolate chip cookie, what's in it? Well, you got the cookie, and it's made out of dough, but it's got all these chips in it. That's part of the, just the wonderful fabulosity of a chocolate chip cookie. If for some reason you live in another country and you've never had one of these, I recommend them. But they're not the same everywhere. The material properties are not the same everywhere. The dough has one material property and the chips have another. Concrete is not homogeneous. It's got sand and cement and water in one part, but it's also got aggregate rocks basically in there. So concrete if you look at it as a whole, you zoom back far enough, yeah, it looks homogeneous, but you zoom in, it's not. It's got rocks and it's got concrete, all right? So that's homogeneous. Well, we're not worried about homogeneous right yet. We're, we're going to move on to a more of uh, maybe sophisticated description called isotropic and orthotropic. Now, not all materials have the same property in every, or same material properties, the same stiffness, the same uh, fracture resistance, the same elastic modulus in every direction. Okay, here is a board. Okay, I have a guitar making lab here, and this is a piece of wood that I'm eventually going to make a guitar with. All right, it's a piece of maple, and it's been thermal treated, so it's a little bit dark. But if you look real close, okay, see if I eh, maybe there. You can see the wood has grain. Well, of course, that's how trees grow. They grow vertical. This board used to be vertical in this maple tree. And the grain is where the uh, seasons passed. There's dark, there's a dense wood and lighter wood, depending on what part of the year the wood grew in, the tree grew in. So this wood is homogeneous. It's the same everywhere. There's no knots in it. There's no voids or anything. It's a nice board. But it is not isotropic. The material properties are not the same everywhere. It's very strong along its length and relatively weak across its length. That's why we make the neck this way in the board and not this way. Okay, it would break if we made it cross grain. So that's anisotropic or isotropic. All right. So here's another one. I'm going to pull out my little cheese stick here. Even materials that look like they're isotropic may not be. Okay, here's. Here's a cheese stick, okay? It's just cheese, right? If I break it this way, right, it breaks it with a certain force. But if I try to break it along the axis of the cheese stick, see if we can do this here. See how it peels, all right? And it's got these little strands in it. Well, what those are is the cheese, when it gets made in the cheese factory, I guess, wherever you go to make these things. I'll put this somewhere where I can not get it too dirty. Um, 
it is extruded through a nozzle, I think, and because of that, it grows along the axis which is extruded, and so it has different properties depending if you're going across the axis of the cheese stick or along the axis of the cheese stick. Notice when I broke it across the axis, it just broke, but when I peeled it, tried to break it along the axis, it peeled open. That's what an isotropy looks like. That's not an isotropic material because its material properties depend on which way you're looking. Okay? So we've got that. Okay? What does orthotropic mean? Well, orthotropic, it sounds kind of like orthogonal. That's what that means. It means you've got two directions that you're interested in, and they are perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. Okay, or orthogonal to each other. And they're real, the material properties can be described in one of two directions. I have a sheet of plywood here that I cut, actually lasered out, uh, part of a guitar that I'm gonna build at some point here. Well, if you look at the, how plywood goes together, one ply goes with, has the grain that way, and the next ply has the grain going this way. The two axes are perpendicular to one another, so this is an orthotropic material. One ply goes that way, one ply goes this way. Well, what's another? Here, I, I, uh, I have many students from China, so I painted this for them. I'm told this means welcome. I hope it does, but that's not the important part. This is the important part. This is just a uh, artist canvas I got at the, 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 the craft store. And what it's made out of, it's canvas. It's woven fabric. So some of the strands of the fibers go this way, and some go that way. This is an orthotropic material. If you've got clothes on right now, and I guess, I guess I hope you have clothes on, your clothes are probably orthotropic. Uh-oh. Now I don't know how to hang it up again. Okay, there we go. Boy, I hope that's right side up. I'm not sure it is. So that's the difference between isotropic and orthotropic. Let's just go around the little playground that is my office. Okay, burn out mill bits that my students keep killing off. This is car uh, carbide, steel with, with carbide in it. This is pretty much isotropic. It's pretty much the same properties no matter which direction you look. This, one of my students was an A10 mechanic before he became a student, so he gave me a shell casing, it's just metal, it's just a piece of aluminum. There's no explodey stuff in there anymore, I, I hope. Now, this is just aluminum, so this is isotropic. Now, the only hitch here is that there are some materials that look isotropic, but really aren't. I mean, they kind of are. I have paper here, I have some little cards. You ever notice that when you tear a piece of paper, it tears easier in one direction than the other? There's one direction, and there's the other direction. It tore easier the second time. This paper actually has a slightly preferred direction. It slightly, uh, it's slightly different material properties in one way or the other. So paper is slightly orthotropic. Okay? And one variation on this is called unidirectional. Okay. If you're dealing with a composite and all the fibers go the same direction and they're just stuck together with a matrix of plastic usually, that's unidirectional. That cheese stick is actually unidirectional. Okay. That paper, I don't know, probably orthotropic. Okay. So here we go. We have isotropic, same material properties in every direction. Metal is usually assumed to be isotropic. Now, rolled plates are rolled in a direction, so steel actually kind of has a grain to it. It's sort of orthotropic, but we generally assume it's isotropic. Talk to a machinist. They will actually care about the grain of the steel. They'll actually have a preferred direction based on the direction a plate is rolled or a bar is extruded. But basically, metals are isotropic. When we analyze them, we usually assume this. Orthotropic, that means plies usually of that are 90 degrees apart. So if you look at my skateboard right here, I've got a really stiff skateboard. I've got a X-wing fighter on one side of it, okay? 
And if you can see this part, you know I flipped it over. But this thing is made out of plywood. And I don't know what it is, birch, maple, something or other. But it's plywood just like that guitar top was. The layers on this plywood are 90 degrees to each other. So this plywood is orthotropic. So there you go. There's some examples. When you get into it, the, the, the distinctions are actually pretty clear. Um, you'll start to see this everywhere you look. And once you know to uh, differentiate between isotropic and orthotropic, your ability to analyze structures is going to grow quite a lot. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time. Several of you have written to me to ask, what are these little signs on my board? These are little signs that have magnets on the back of them. So this is a, is a uh, little stress element I use when I teach strength of materials. There is a dachshund drawn by uh, Picasso. There's Frank Zappa. There's Oscar Wilde. There's Robin Williams. We sure do miss him. That doesn't need any, any introduction. And I just love this. I hope this my students see this. So for all of you who asked, there they are.